Thanks for um, getting up today. I know a lot of you were um, at the PowerPoint karaoke, probably enjoying uh, various beverages. Um, so this is a talk about malicious potential of our DDoS, reflected DDoS, and I'm Aaron. And I'm Aaron. So we're the Aarons. We're some of the Aarons, anyways. It's just spelled differently. There's a lot of Aarons. Um, so this is Aaron Kaplan over there, and I'm Aaron Leverett over here. Okay. Next slide. So, 108.49 terabits, yes, terabits per second. This is um, a number that we talked about a while back. Um, before we did the research, we wanted to know what the maximum uh, DDoS of the internet was. Someone asked me a few years ago. We'll say a little bit about why we calculated that in later slides. And when I first heard this question, like what's the maximum DDoS potential of the internet, I thought, you're crazy. It's not calculable. I don't know how I'd approach this, blah, blah, blah. And then I met this guy. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, so yes, um, let's briefly talk about like how we came up with that number and soon you will see actually it is an estimate. Okay, so to be very clear, this is an estimate and the reason why we're presenting this is because we bring, want to bring out this idea to a lar larger audience in order to consolidate feedback and um, uh, get your uh, ideas into maybe next version of this uh, paper. Um, on the first slide and on the last slide, you, you'll actually have the link uh, of the paper we published in, in Chatham House about this. And I'll briefly run through the uh, method, how we came up with that number. Um, yeah. It's also worth saying that's the number for 2016. Right. right? So we calculated that for uh, the year of 2016. We'd like to do some more research on 2017. You'll understand more of why we don't um, give the number for 2017 yeah. yet as we go through the presentation. Yeah. So basically, the first um, uh, caveat here comes in that we took the data, the sc existing scanning data of these four protocols, UDP amplifier protocols, um, NTP, DNS, SSTP, uh, and SNMP. SNMP is well known. It's often used, actually, DNS uh, and, and uh, NTP as well. SSTP, uh, universal plug and play uh, related. Um, and the idea is I, I worked with uh, JP Surd on a project called Cybergreen on this and uh, did some stats and the idea was to, to visualize that and make it understandable for policymakers um, and to, to have a nice uh, portal for this. But then we, we met and we talked and we came up with a, with a new idea here. And uh, basically we came up with the idea that actually we could, based on these counts of these uh, amplifiers, UDP amplifiers, we could estimate the uh, reflective volumetric reflective DDoS power of the internet. So how do we do it? Um, let's briefly recap uh, how does UDP amplification work. Um, uh, you have an attacker, you have a UDP amplifier, and you have a victim. So the source IP of the victim is put into the the question packet here from the attacker to the UDP amplifier. So the um, UDP amplifier thinks he has to send it back to the victim. And uh, there is an amplification factor here. In this case, it would be 100. So if I send one byte per second here to the UDP amplifier, uh, uh, it, it will send one packet with 100 bytes uh, back to the, um, to the victim, which he, the UDP amplifier thinks is the attacker. So it's like the equivalent of, uh, um, I order like uh, 10,000 uh, catalogs in your name and you get them, yeah? Okay, so this is what's happening and um, um, these are amongst the biggest DDoSs um, uh, that we know. Oop. So um, what is the amplification factor for a couple of these protocols? For NTP it's a large number, 556 five, uh, is the factor. Um, DNS varies between 28 and 54, so we took the average of those numbers. Uh, jargon is also pretty nice. There's still a lot of jargon out there. Um, RIP is quite nice, RIP version 1. Um, just take a look at your modem, for example. It might have RIP version 1 still enabled. You know? um, pretty common. Um, yeah, so this here, you can look at this list. Okay, um, what does that give? Basically, we took those numbers in the first estimate, took those numbers, count of amplifiers times the amplification factor would give a DDoS potential of a country. So you take the NIP address, if it's an amplifier, geolocate it, 
and uh, basically multiply by the amplification factor. It's, and, worth, it's worth pausing here too and, yeah. and clarifying. We're not talking about DDoSs that occurred. We're talking about this is the potential. Set, this is the space of um, of amplifiers from which all DDoSs in a year do occur. So if you have data for 2016, you can go back and see how much of the potential was used at a given time based on all the attacks that you have seen. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the the first numbers are pretty high. Like, remember, this is terabits per second. It's 651 terabits per second for all the UDP amplifiers in these four protocols in the US according to MaxMind. Um, however, we, after some discussions, we figured out actually this is not the whole picture because um, what you need to factor in is, let's say an ISP has um, um, CPEs, uh, Wi-Fi modems or something, and, um, and they, they will limit the upstream capacity. So if you remember the picture before, the attacker will send uh, one byte per, per second or x bits per second in this picture, and here uh, x bits, uh, bits per second times the amplification factor comes out. But of course this is limited by the upstream capacity. Usually the, the right side here is higher, but the upstream capacity caps this. So we need to factor this in. So easy task, right? Just get the upstream capacity of every IP address. Huh. Um, Anybody have that data? Just out of curiosity. Yes, please. Give it Love to, to us. speak to you. Yeah. Um, so Aaron came, came up with the other. Aaron came up with a really good idea um, to take the MLAB data uh, from here, measurementlab.net, and calculate, I think, the median. Uh, yes. So I calculated the, the quartiles, basically, the min, max, upper, and lower quartile, and the median. Um, you might ask, why do we take the median instead of the average? Because capacities come in chunks, right? It's not like they're a smooth um, function. So we chose to use the median for every individual country. So does everyone, uh, well, I doubt everyone knows, but has anyone in the room heard of MLAB? Raise your hand. Good. All right, more of you should have heard of MLAB. Yes. Um, they do really cool measurement stuff. They're network nerds of the finest kind. They give us a lot of support on this. And they, they have this access, uh, this data is open access. Now, to get it, you need to uh, jump through a few hoops and get a Google account because you need to use uh, Bigtable queries to query their data set. But they will pay for your queries. They have money to pay for your queries. So you don't have to um, get Google credits or anything to do this. So this data is open access, but requires a little work. And once you do that, you can then say, like, for this country in the world, I want, um, you know, the medians, or I want the averages, or I want the maximums, or the minimums, or whatever. And I did that. I did quartiles for all of the 180 or so countries in the world for the entire year of 2016. Uh, and then I put that into tables in, uh, that we use for the rest of our calculations for the year of 2017. Uh, two th sorry, 2016. And the reason um, that we wanted to do that over an entire year is because we get fluctuations in the uh, amplifier counts. And we'll talk a lot more about scanning. I know a lot of people think that scanning is boring. Uh, we don't. We think it's very complicated. It's very interesting. And we're going to get into that a little bit in this talk. Also, just uh, for, for the people interested in maths, uh, we, in the paper we have the, the formula, basically you cap by the minimum of the upstream capacity and the amplification factor with the downstream compa capacity. So um, it's actually pretty simple, but... Uh, yeah, it looks complicated as yeah, an equation, it's actually pretty simple. but it's really simple. It's basically just the minimum yeah. of the upstream uh, times the amplify, amplification, or sorry, the downstream to the amplification factor or the upstream. And it turns out it's usually the upstream. Yes. Right? Surprise. Yeah. Okay, so why did we want to do this research? Why is this question interesting? Okay, so from my point of view, I, I, I used to be a penetration tester. I did a lot of offensive stuff, and then I went across uh, from the Cambridge Computer Lab and IOActive, where I was working, to the business school. And I'm not, as you can see, a business school kind of guy, but they invited me over to the risk center, and I got the opportunity to work with some terrorism experts, some kidnap and ransom experts, some hurricane experts, who all do risk, right, of one kind or another. Financial risk, interbank lending, that sort of stuff. So it's like joining the X-Men of risk, and uh, I'm kind of hanging around going, yeah, I'm a cyber guy, we don't have many equations, we don't really know what we're doing. Um, but I got the chance to work with all of these other people, and they start showing me models of just how bad hurricanes could be, or just how bad interbank lending could be. And I start to think about things in these kind of risk perspectives, and someone comes up to me and goes, okay, we're gonna speak to some cyber insurance companies, and they wanna know what the maximum DDoS can be. And I just think, no, it's not possible, right? But also, because of being a penetration tester and because of being a hacker, 
when I see that something is impossible, I think, well, could it be possible again soon or in the future or like what's going to change, right? And basically it slowly became clear we just needed data. We just needed the data and then slowly we could get to the point where we could estimate it. So one of the things I want you to take away from this presentation is not the number, but that it is estimable. We can get to a point where we will be able to estimate this entire capacity for the internet and then compare it to the actual DDoS events that we see and we'll know something about how effective attackers are based on how effectively they use the available uh, reflectors. So for me, um, first of all, I like working with Aaron. Yeah, that's already a good reason. But um, uh, for me, the, the reason to look into that is basically scanning gave us this I think I'm saying the same thing like you, just in different words. But anyway, uh, scanning is uh, a very interesting technique, and it for, for the first time gives us like global, uh, a global perspective on the internet. And um, based on that, and based on metrics and measurements, um, which I think we still have to improve, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can fi for the first time get a global picture of what this, how this really looks like, and um, this will shape. The, uh, the debate and the policy debate on, on, on a lot of uh, IT security topics like DDoS, for example. We just chose DDoS in that case and even limited to only four protocols. But you can expand that and you can take that idea, that, uh, that metric and expand and, and basically make things measurable. And uh, in other words, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And if you can't put a number to it in, let's say, live saved or, um, or money or whatever. Um, Terabits prevented, right? Ter yeah right, uh, uh, then we'll always stay in our circles, like the IT security circles, or, you know, this hack is so bad, and this and that, and so But You know, on the policy level, people will actually listen to, to money numbers, or lives saved, or whatever, yeah? Um, or like your talk about uh, health, the healthcare uh, industry. That's really actually important, yeah? And if we can translate that based on data and metrics, we can actually have a bigger impact. Uh, so also the, the whole idea of the ec uh, economics of this comes into play. So what, for example, what are the costs for an attacker? What are the costs for uh, ISPs globally to clean up this mess of UDP amplifiers? And what are the costs of a um, service which gets DDoSed into oblivion for days and weeks? It's possible. Um, you know, compare those costs and then make an informed decision. So I think if we have these arguments, we can actually really make a big difference. That's why I think we're doing this. I'd say too, that there was one other element about why, which is uh, both Aaron and I, uh, part of the reason we like working together is that we hate received wisdom. You just walk around this community and you hear the same thing repeated over and over, and then you think, where's the data on that? And you dig a little deeper and you realize it's just something that people say. So a lot of times we were hearing people say stuff like, well, IoT is the big thing to blame for DDoS, for reflected DDoS, um, and it's Africa. Right? It's basically all these people getting online that have IoT devices in these countries and have no protections and blah, blah, blah. And we thought, is that really true? Like, is it okay to just go around blaming Africa for DDoS? So we wanted to examine some of these questions. And so you get into the metrics and you look at the data and you try and find out what's going on. It turns out it's not Africa, no surprise. So yeah, that brings us to our findings. Um, yeah. so. Okay, so I apologize for the fact that we are going to bombard you with pie charts for a little while. <laughs> I hope you like pie. Um, there's nice. the, well, it's, it's all right. It's not going to take me long. What I really want you to take away from this crazy psychedelic graph that I clearly made when I'd, um, I don't know, had too much club mata or something, um, is, the, is that 50% of it is made up by a small number, a small group, right? So this is DNS for 2016. And you can just see, like, there's all these little people at the bottom that have a small percentage of the total potential. But then, you know, there's these countries uh, that make up nearly 50% of it that we should be going to have discussions about. And going back to Aaron's point about economics, if we could translate in a way that made all of us comfortable terabits into dollars and cents or euros or whatever currency you prefer, Bitcoin, for example, then you can start to make discussions about BCP38 and its value to the community. Does that make sense? So like, if you implemented BCP38, you could mitigate this much of the economic damage to businesses because of blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So we have these uh, diagrams for multiple protocols. Let's just bang through them. NTP, SNMP, it's the same story. It's like 10 to five major players are the top half of the DDoS potential of IPv4. Mm -hmm. All right, so this graph, uh, we love graphs, we love, love data viz. This one is basically just about reflector counts versus potential. And this is the median potential, not the max. 
Um, but you can see the average count of reflectors over the entire year of 2016. Each one of these dots is a country. And you can see that the potential is really decorrelated from the number of reflectors. Now, traditional DDoS policy for mitigation is let's go find all the reflectors, and the more reflectors you clean up, the more of a difference this makes. Well, our argument is you should be focusing on the ones that have a lot of bandwidth. Surprise. So um, just to test this, uh, basically, uh, we took uh, Russia as an example, the distribution of bandwidth. Um, that's from uh, RipeStat. Um, so you can see this is really this, this typical long tail curve. Um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, nodes have uh, below one mbit, uh, below one or two mbit here, um, and then a few have uh, 70 mbit. Yeah. So this is really in our in our formula. This reflects clearly that the 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 number of high capacity nodes really trump the whole. Um, uh, the whole scene, basically, and right. Uh, yeah. Right. So basically, yeah. if you go after the reflectors that are in these ASNs or these countries, you're going to make a big difference. Now, this is a graph for an individual country, but it turns out bandwidth distribution looks like this. It's a pretty lot. much the same. So yeah. distributions matter is basically yeah. what we're yeah. saying. Yeah. Right. Yep. This one. Okay. So this is another graph of a similar type. This is basically max. This is not median. This is max throughput, and it's not capacity. It's throughput. But if you do uh, the download max versus the upload max. Most of the countries cluster in this way. And if you do median, you get this nice kind of line that's going on in this sort of diagram. And then you have these two crazy outlier countries, the US and Czechoslovakia, that apparently have massive upload pipes. That's basically what the graph says, right? Yeah. So the people with massive upload pipes and a lot of reflectors are the ones we want to be talking to about cleaning up data, or about cleaning up reflectors. Yeah, and uh, that's another nice example. Like uh, My question was, like, why Czechoslov uh, the Czech Republic? Uh, um, and, you know, it's a nice example of why uh, we also have to be very careful about the reference data that, oops, sorry, yep. wrong button, the reference data that we're using. Uh, you always, uh, with this kind of research, you always have to go back and ask yourself, was that correct? Was that correct? Test with a second uh, approach. So that's, a lot we'll of people, come to that anyway. Yeah? A lot yeah. of people do data yeah. visualization because they want to make a point and get an idea yeah. across. One of the things I love, again, about working with Aaron is that we use data viz just to look at the data and figure yeah. out what's weird about it, mm -hmm. to find the outliers, the anomalies, and this mm -hmm. is what leads to some of our insights. Yeah. So this is like uh, basically the, how the, the data ended up in that um, uh, portal page here. Um, here, up there, so you, you can uh, you can track things over time uh, for different protocols. You can combine, uh, compare different countries or ASNs. You can get a split down of the different ASNs within a country. Here, uh, usually it's all, always like one big ASN uh, which actually uh, contributes the most. So you can get to this 80-20 uh, uh, efficiency uh, principle, where you say first we'll talk with the big ASNs, the big. Uh, producers of uh, DDoS potential uh, to clean that up. And um, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Can I say one more yeah, thing sure. about this graph? So uh, when working with CyberGreen on some data, one of the things we want to talk about is if you incentivize people to clean up some of their reflectors or to clean up some of the potential, what is the impact? And uh, you see these graphs of like the number of reflectors. And if you start rewarding people, the graph just suddenly you know goes and then drops, right? Yep. Because they firewall your, your scanners and they've shown that they've cleaned up all their reflectors and then you pay out and then they haven't really done the work, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want that um, and we're math nerds. So we look at which of these are monotonically decreasing or increasing because it's a much better sign of what's mm -hmm. going on in terms of mitigations. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that hits on another really important point. So if you really want to make a change, uh, give them the, the feedback graph so that they, whoever cleans up can improve. And then basically put, you know, give them stars, golden stars, or whatever. Yeah, that's the trick of sslabs.com, mm. A till F on test your SSL uh, certificates and the server settings, and that really works. Gamification is a little bit stupid, but it works. Um, yeah, that's your okay. Point. So uh, we're not entirely comfortable with the data that we have for 2015, 14, and 13, which is why we focused on 2016. We waited till the data was stable in a way that we're comfortable with, but we still want to use it to make broad uh, understanding of what's going on. So you can see this this throughput normalized uh, potential. So that's basically, instead of just using the amplification times uh, the number of reflectors, now we're looking at um, what happens when you scale back by the available bandwidth of each individual country, right, or the throughput. And we use the median, as I said. So you can see it's growing over time. 
unsurprisingly, right? DDoSes are getting bigger and they're getting worse. If you only study DDoSes as an event, you know that's possible. But the thing that blows me away is that one of the largest uh, DDoSes we saw in that year was 1.2 terabits a second, right? So two orders of magnitude larger is the potential. That's really, really interesting to me. And then I want you to focus on this throughput revealed percentage number uh, over at the end, right? Which is basically saying, as you increase the bandwidth of the country, the DDoS potential is more revealed and you're gonna get bigger attacks flowing from that country. So as you increase bandwidth and you don't do any cleanup, you have a problem. Yeah. So, you know, since you mentioned Africa or so, yes, big pipes not only make the internet faster there, but also DDoS is faster, basically. Okay, um, yeah, that's still yours. Um, yeah, so this was just a thought experiment. What if we throw away all of our complicated mathematical models and we just do averages? And uh, the point is that you come out with a very different result. So I'm basically just saying that's not the approach that I feel comfortable with and I think it's better to do individual countries or indeed ASN level data. So we're doing this again for ASNs uh, in the future. Okay. So here you there you go. Here's the here's the picture slide, right? Uh, we couldn't do every country in the world all at the same time, um, just because it wouldn't fit on a single Sankey diagram. But I think that the Sankey diagram really gives you a perspective of these countries um, that we're nearby today, and you can see for each individual protocol what the contributions are and how they contribute uh, to the whole uh, of that region, right? So that's just. Um, you know, the number of megabits per second that could flow out of this region in 2016. Any questions on this diagram? No. Everyone's bored of math. They want more exploitation. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, yeah, what we said before, um, increase of bandwidth of the internet, of course, increases the DDoS potential. Um, we believe our new metric, the, the, the one which caps the upstream, um, uh, is much better. It's the improved metric, but there's interestingly enough like this 0.3%, uh, 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 um, it's 0.3% compared to the old metric. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important if you do metrics on this type of research, I think the takeaway point is if you do metrics, discuss it a lot. That's also another reason why we're talking here, because if you're working on this, please come to us afterwards. And I think we need to come up with some kind of a common agreement on best practice on how to measure correctly and how which metric is the best way to reflect that. And I think this needs to be sort of a group discussion um, or a bigger project than just us two, um, uh, because, and also maybe some more publications, mm -hmm. because we need to come to an agreement if we don't have this agreement, there's nothing that we have, we don't have any solid, uh, you know, research that we can give to policymakers, for example, saying this is how the experts see this, you yeah? know, or that's how we think it is. Um, it's so, a good place to talk about failure as well, which is, of course, yeah. the keynote theme. Right. And failure is also important to science, it's falsifiability. So uh, we like to joke around that the best way to get the right answer for an unanswerable question is to publish the wrong answer first because on the internet, everyone likes to correct a wrong answer and you'll quickly come to some sort of convergence of what the right answer is. So that's basically what we're doing here is we're publishing a very quick and dirty back of the envelope. Okay, it was actually two weeks of work, but um, estimate. Um, but we hope that you'll come along with better data sets uh, or better techniques or better mathematics or better statistics or uh, the view of actual uh, attacks. One of the very clearly beautiful falsifiable uh, elements of this work is if you see DDoS attacks as opposed to potential, you could take all of the DDoS attacks you see per year, you could try and get some measure of the flow per country in uh, gigabits per second, megabits per second, terabits per second, and you can do rankings of, of the contribution of each country, right? And we can do rankings of the potential. And if we can get a rank correlation across a couple hundred events, that would either validate our methodology or invalidate it, which would be interesting for us, right? And hopefully for you too. So let's take a step back and let's let's examine how we did that. Um, what was really the the process? So first, somebody on the internet scanned. In that case, it was Jared Mouch. Thank you, Jared, for you, supplying Jared. the the data. Um, and he scanned and he had his uh, you know uh, way of uh, testing the the whole internet. Uh, 
I took that data and collected it basically from him. Then we did some filtering, enrichment, the classical ETL process. En enrichment based on the reference data sets, aggregated, and then presentation layer, okay? Um, some serious scanning nerds. Yeah. This is like nmap-ir0, which all of you clearly know the no, flags by No, I think he, he actually wrote his own scanner for what? this. What? Yes. In did. user space? Yes. Sorry. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, so in German, there's this nice saying, I don't know for the German speakers here, but wer misst, der misst, misst. So in roughly in English, it's like, if you measure, you measure crap. It's just a uh, funny thing, thing here. It's like crap in German sounds like measure. Um, so um, I think overall, the trends of his scans were okay. I think there were some gaps sometimes. Uh, when he didn't scan, the hard disk was full or whatever. Um, that's something that we need to accommodate for and basically know. It can um, also happen because of routing, right? Routing yeah. changes in the middle of right. a scan. Yeah. You know, when ZMAP came out, it became a lot easier to complete a scan. When we were right. back in the unicorn scan days, it might take, you know, a couple of days or something to scan the entire mm -hmm. IPv4 space, and you could lose chunks of routing at the in the middle of a scan, yeah. right? Um, and mm. also, when we were discussing this this morning, we we changed this. Clearly, the changes haven't propagated. That's not a question mark. Um, Oh, yeah. We are aware of some poisoning attempts of scanning results. Yeah. So if you scan from the same box repeatedly over and over and over, eventually you'll start to see results coming in that you know are invalid. And it looks so, like there are people out there that like to poison other people's scans with false data. Right. So basically, again, UDP can change the source IP address. Uh, if your uh, ISP doesn't uh, deploy BCP38, it goes through. And um, yes, uh, that happens. So somebody's uh, uh, poisoning the, the, the scanners on the internet. Um, also, the interesting thing is here, a couple of these scans have widely different uh, counts of the same thing. Um, so uh, comparing against other scans is pretty interesting. So you, you really have to carefully narrow down on what is the proper way to measure things here. That's a lesson uh, that we, I took away, and I think we need this gold standard or, or a good documented how to scan properly, uh, not only from the ethical side, not only from the privacy side, not from the opt-outs, only from the opt-out side. These things exist, but also like... Data quality. Data quality, yeah. Um, and there are trade-offs. Scanning quickly with a ZMAP or, or similar is easy. Well, it's, it's possible now, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for Shorten, for example, scans much much uh, slower. Yeah, so there um, and there there are benefits to that. Yeah, um, so I personally prefer scanning it uh, below twelve hundred packets per second yeah. because you get better results and you don't piss everyone off. So yeah. take so, that away. So far, I mean, this is I think an unsolved problem, and that's why we're putting this out here. Okay. Um, there is a site which tracks all the scanners, uh, which is a uh, 360 uh, netlab360.com, I think, and um, that's pretty interesting. They, 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 a lot of people are scanning. There's no agreement on on really with the results. So the collector is um, pretty much one of the easiest parts. Is uh, R-syncing, um, um, but sometimes we have long uh, long outages. Okay, uh, filtering. In my experience, that can go very wrong. Um, so you have basically two ways of processing the whole batch of data, if you, especially if you have lots of old data from, from years of scanning. You either want to process it all in one go and batch. Um, you know, you can use a Hadoop or whatever for it, or um, MapReduce, or, um, um, or just in one box and wait yeah, for tera terabytes of data. <laughs> um, or you uh, uh, process incrementally. But there's an interesting uh, lesson for me that I learned is if, you, if I process incrementally and something goes wrong, for example, I change something in the filtering code, I have to go back and redo the whole thing again and again and again. And that's pretty time consuming. Um, uh, that's so all a very fancy way of saying metrics have to be reliable. If yes. you're gonna repeat them, the repeatability has to match a certain level of quality, otherwise people can't use it, right? Yeah. Um, and here in the filtering stage, a lot, uh, you know, if you have errors here, it basically really amplifies all the way in the ba to the back. Um, I really love this final sentence, by the way, because it's absolutely yes. true. That's why we do networks in the real world, because yeah. stuff is actually very, very weird. Yeah. So also, you need to inspect a lot of the data, and that's, again, very time-consuming. Yeah? Um, and we're not 100% sure if we filtered out all the irrelevant uh, answers. So this, there might be something in the, in the data that is uh, not... Relevance. Okay, there you go. Enrich. Old school. 
Uh, thanks. Um, the enrichment stage, uh, basically, uh, you have you typically IP to ASN, IP to country um, uh, enrichment. Um, so for IP to ASN, usually you use the most current border gateway protocol table, um, but that might vary a little bit. Uh, so that's also something to consider. What is the vantage point that you're, mm -hmm. you know, enriching from, sort of? Uh, the, the internet doesn't look the same from every IP address. Yeah. Um, IP to country. Um, first I used MaxMind, then IP to location, and then MaxMind again. Um, why MaxMind? Because even though it's not 100% correct, everyone uses it, so it gives us better comparability. That's another thing to consider, yeah? Country codes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows the ISO 3166-2 standard, right? Yes. Of course, obviously. But some people prefer the International Olympic Committee list. Uh, Maxman has a country called A1, A2, which is um, satellites uh, and proxies. Anonymous and, proxies, yeah. yeah. Proxies, et cetera. Then you, had a, you discovered a country T or something somewhere. Mm, yeah. So this, XY, this, that's yeah. a famous NATO yeah. country for yeah. we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot to, to filter out. And of course, you know, once you come, come to the policy level, you want to, want to present your data, there are sensitivities also that you mm. need to respect, like uh, is it Taiwan, Chinese, Taipei, whatever. Yeah, so, mm. yeah. Um, Upstream bandwidth, currently the best data that we got our yep. hands on was MLAB. If you have a better data set, if you know about a better data set, I would love to use Ookla, but that's speedtest.net. It's used a lot, they have a lot of data, but I think they sell it, and um, I didn't get access to it yet. Um, but I think we can improve here. So a very simple thing you could do is rerun our experiments with different data and tell us what results you get. Yeah. And I think that's publishable, yeah. with or without us, so go. Yeah. Also. Um, uh, if you use that reference data to enrich, uh, one mistake not to repeat is um, archive your reference data because then you can reproduce the results. If you don't archive those, you, you're never going to be able to have the same enrichment step again. Yeah? Okay. Aggregation, easy, basically sum it up. Still, you know, lots of loops and um, Trying yeah. to do that correctly, loops and Python code <laughs> especially and in, in Postgres, yeah. Yep. Um, and the presentation layer, um, uh, it's really important to to point out exactly when you made um, omissions. For example, here there was no data coming in here. In here. Uh, so this basically got, got interpolated here. Uh, here there was a change in methodology of, of scanning. Yeah. So there's lots of places, and basically you need to be transparent about these. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I think what we did so far is cap the, the um, upstream, the DDoS uh, stream by the, by the um, ISPs um, upstream, yeah? Um, but what we did not do yet is we did not check if there is a, a bottleneck in the backbone. Let's say between um, Holland and, and England, for example. Uh, very well connected countries. Um, maybe the backbone links are not as strong as the DDoS potential. Actually, we would have to have another min term in the formula in there. We don't have that yet. It would be cool to know that data. I didn't get it yet. We're as working on it. Sorry? Yeah, we're working on getting that yes. data. So, tell so we think it's a, a max flow problem across core exactly. internet, and we need different yes. flows, right? So Telegeography is a company that uh, makes these wonderful subway cable maps. Uh, you might have seen them on the net or maybe printed somewhere in some offices. Um, but these reflect um, late uh, fiber cables, but not lit fiber cables. Yeah? Mm. So again, this is an um, interesting yes, thing. The yeah? details matter. And, a, and yeah. a simpler way of saying this is we don't think you could see a single terabit, or a single 108 terabit attack. What we see that is, is an event set. You can see a number of attacks at any given time that might sum to less than that number. And we think the number might be substantially smaller when we consider core flows between different countries or ASNs. Yeah. So basically, uh, maybe I'm... This is the potential at the edge, not the yeah, core. Right, exactly. So, but it boils down to a multi uh, max flow problem. So you have uh, different sources and you have a destination. Let's assume only one net block gets DDoSed. Uh, what is the max flow between uh, that destination and all the sources? Right. And that's actually the real mathematical pro problem here. Right. 
Yeah. So we understand the math. We don't have the data. So if you have the data, get in touch. Yeah. And you you came up with something interesting. You uh, you found out some some forums or so that, that they only managed to get 15 terabits per second. In the yeah. Room. So yeah. Um, a, a mentor of mine gave me some advice years ago, which was basically be in the room with evil, uh, both as an activist and as an intellectual. You should spend time with the people that you think are causing harm. So I went and spoke to another uh, another researcher that's at Cambridge, uh, who's done fantastic work on um, stressors and booters. And I love speaking to people who interact with stressors and booters. And a couple of them said that the max they could generate was 15 terabits a second. So you know how much we trust uh, random conversations with people on the internet anonymously is another question. But at least it's a data point, right? But they had no reason to, to basically hide it, right? So right, exactly. I, I, I In fact, do, they have a reason yeah. to advertise it because they're right. making money by how much exactly. they can generate. Yeah. Right? So I think that's actually very interesting that our number is, uh, the potential says there's more potential still, at least on the edge of the network, than the booters and the stress testers could really generate. Um, so it's interesting, yeah? Um, I think, well, we only, um, no, I'm still here, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also uh, only tested these uh, four protocols. So um, there's, uh, as I showed you, the US cert list of the amplifiers. Um, it would be really interesting to expand the, the protocol list um, and also add non-UDP amplifiers, let's say the Mira botnet or similar, where basically the capacity is just the, the sum of the upstream capacities. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Okay, we got to wrap up because we got to yes. be respectful of the next speakers who are also awesome and we want to see them speak. Um, but the main conclusion I want you to take away is that we think that this max um, RDDoS metric is calculable. So we think it's calculable. We've given you a number. Go away, try and calculate it, figure it out for yourselves. We don't think it's an unknowable number. Um, and then we could expand this to IPv6 and we could do this by ASN and we could look at variance per ASN and all sorts of other things. But the real main takeaway is essentially that Bandwidth is far below amplification factor. And DDoS research so far for reflected DDoS has focused incredibly hard on the amplification factors, but they're far above the available bandwidth in most cases, so they're very, very limited by that upstream bandwidth. Or another way to say this is um, if, we, um, if we basically continue, uh, the, um, the, the focus is on cleanup. Uh, and so I think you mentioned the internet, global internet health uh, pandemic issue. That's a nice example of this. Yeah, uh, if we if we see it collectively as uh, this is something that we can clean up, uh, start with the top producers or the top potential producers of um, reflective uh, UDP DDoS. Um, uh, we can work down on that and and, and make massive improvements uh, because the techniques. To solve that are known, BCB38, for example, um, and it's not that hard, actually. Um, uh, it's just something that really can now translate, eventually maybe based on our research into real monetary costs. Um, you know, what is the cost of suffering a DDoS for weeks? It's possible. Um, versus over-provisioning over your pipes. That's the classical answer of the large uh, content delivery networks. Just buy more bandwidth. No. Mm. It's like you'll, you'll still get DDoS to hell. Yeah? Like, I mean, the only, the only bottleneck that I really saw based on, on our findings was this unofficial uh, Buddhist stress tester uh, uh, estimate, 15 mm -hmm. terabits. That was their capability based on their software, but not on the internet's bandwidth. The right. internet gives more. Right. Okay? So thanks very much for coming to listen to us. Yep. I really appreciate anyone who wants to um, get up and hear about uh, math and scanning nerdery. So thanks for giving us your time and attention today. Okay. We do actually have time for like one or two quick questions, even though these guys will get really long answers. Mm -hmm. We'll keep them short. Hello, thanks for your talk. Uh, one question, you mentioned BCP38. Uh, uh, I think this is quite important because uh, uh, nearly 80% of the ISPs implemented BCP38. Uh, Do you took that into, um, so are you aware of these numbers and uh, to, um, uh, where they implemented into your estimation? So, no, not so, so there, there is uh, from, um, 
from Casey Claffey, there is a quite a, quite a good uh, research um, on on that already. Um, so basically, you can test uh, uh, on your own network if the ISP implements BCP38. Um, so the the answer to that, I thought about that also, and the answer to that is, we still have so many UDP reflectors out there, uh, which work. You know, these are tested reflectors. Yeah. Uh, so the scanning that Jared did basically tests. Is that really a refle reflector? Yeah, and um, uh, would I, for example, for a DNS packet, would I get the the, the answer back? Yeah, um, so it works whenever you are on some network where you can have a, enough capacity to instrument all of these UDP amplifiers, which exist anyway, um, and uh, you just need to go to one ISP which doesn't implement BCP38 to, in order to instrument those. So basically, that is a um, a hard problem to say everyone needs to have PCP38, mm. and then the whole problem will be gone. But everyone on the internet needs to yeah, have Yeah, it's that. a herd immunity problem. Yeah. So essentially, BCP38 in some places solves your problem, but we view this as our problem. Right. And yes. if I can still find other places to generate the traffic, it doesn't matter so much. Yeah, so, so herd immunity. We should discuss this later, because yeah. we want to keep it brief. So, so it's yeah. a really a change of, of mindset, but it's a very important research, in my opinion. Yeah? But we didn't incorporate mm. it into the metric yeah. yet. So OK. Another question? One more? One more question. If you want to? Yeah, okay. Uh, just really quick, did you talk to Cloudflare about this? Sorry? To Cloudflare, the DDoS protection No, service. not yet. We'd like to, because one of the things we want to know is what the best mitigations are out there. I've heard from various people that 300 gigabits per second is yes. kind of the max. Yes. And I'd love to basically show that how many attacks could occur from this set if everybody was protected at that level? Yeah. Doing some quick math in my head, like 365 events every eight hours, so like a thousand events or something um, per year at that kind of level would not be protected, right? So um, we'd love to speak to Cloudflare and Akamai and some other yeah. people because they have a view of real events instead of potential. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Also, also yeah. I think uh, at, the, at the first conference there was a small SIG uh, where we both attended and we presented that basically for the first time to that kind of audience. Who, who was uh, leading that Martin SIG? Martin McKay, right. McKay yeah. from yeah. Uh, Akamai. So we've had yeah. some brief chats with him, and but we'll have a few more. But yeah, I'd love to talk to Cloudflare yeah. and Akamai or yeah. Prolexic or yeah. Arbor Networks, anyone who's doing uh, DDoS events. Right. right. So and they, they basically never they didn't uh, well Martin didn't think about this idea and uh, he raised quite some eyebrows. So I think there is potential to improve and that's why we're putting out this idea here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. We don't have time for any more questions. These guys are going to be outside. You'll be able to get them whenever you want. Thanks. <laughs>